probably recognize me by now. I'm Skylar with Lean Frontiers, and we have Oscar, Celeste, and Wes on here. So you are all falling in pretty quickly, so that's awesome. And I will hand it over to Oscar. Thanks, Skylar. <clears throat> and as always, um, very much appreciate the work you do behind the scenes in the, putting this stuff together. So very quick introduction. You may have met these people before. Celeste Ayres is the Senior Manager Operations L&D with Gallo Wines up in Modesto. And Wes Rawlings is the Program Manager Operations L&D. So I don't want to spend any more time uh, with me saying much. So let me hand straight over to uh, Celeste and Wes, and a one-minute overview, please, of who you are and what you guys do. Sure, real quick, and maybe it's a twofer. We can do them both. So our job here at uh, ENJ Gallo Winery is responsible for operations and development for our spirits plant, the bottling room, our winery bottling room, and the cellar. So it's all roles entry level into our population up to leadership. So that's roughly about a thousand, two thousand people. Uh, give or take a few hundred uh, on, a, on a daily basis. And our job really is to prepare them for the world of work and be able to make as much product as possible. Beautiful, thank you. So as uh, we put in the brief for this webinar, it's really a follow on for one that was in August uh, and particularly a question relating to uh, JI and standardized work. Now we're gonna come to that, but let's start with a couple of questions that were left from the last one and from the, that have come in from this new one. So. One of the questions is why, and I thought it was an interesting one to start with, why do you think TWIJI is not the number one training method in the USA? You guys are pretty taken by it, but why is it not the number one? Because it's not. Oh, there's so many answers to that one. Do you have one off the top of mind? Because I've got spicy answers. Ones. I've got yeah. good ones. Uh, I can tell you in my previous life, we didn't do it. And I think that's because training is one of those things that people think they know how to do. So I, I can train anyone to do anything. Why do I have to go learn a method for that? I should just do this thing. And that's what led us really to TWI in the first place because there's a little bit of humility going, we have a daunting task ahead of us. How do we do this right? And not relying on our own experience alone, we did our research and was, this is the best way. And I think it's one of those best kept secrets because once people hold on to it, they go like, it's mine. I don't want anyone else to know about it. Where our approach is, <coughs> We need, to, we need you to know, yeah, sure. and we need you to get on board. I think at the same time, people, once they grab onto it and understand it, they, they realize this is the best way to do it. We should be doing it this way. Um, but then beyond that, it, it, you know, it takes a lot of effort and work to switch over from however it's currently being done yeah. to JI, like any, like any change does. So that, I, I think a lot of people get caught in that, and they you know, f fall back into the comfort zone of, you know, let's do it the way we've been doing it forever, because it's a little bit easier and more comfortable at the moment because it takes effort it takes time it's not an overnight thing to to switch it over yeah sure uh, i think you touched on Celeste, an important thing and one of the things i often think is that or i often say is that training is an in, workplace training is an interaction between two human beings now what mm -hmm. is that interaction going to look like and how do we standardize that do you, mm -hmm. you want to i think there's a lack of recognition of that do you want to comment on that briefly there, yes. So that is the one thing that sold me on TWI completely and, and being a relatively recent, recent convert in the last couple of years, right? It's really the, how do I know that the training that I'm delivering on day shift is exactly the same as going to be on grave shift or from one trainer to the next? I couldn't answer that in the way we were doing things before. And when I was tasked by our leadership to make sure that we're training in a repeatable defendable way, this was it. And this answered it. And it's a discipline and actually brings rigor to your training that you're delivering. And it, it fit the bill. It, it hit all the check marks of our, what our CEFO was saying we needed to do. And from an operation standpoint, it made absolute sense. Yeah, I think you've picked on two key words there as to why it's not common. And that is the use of the words discipline and rigor. Mm -hmm. I think to some degree that answers why it's not common. Right. Some degree, yes. To some degree. Uh, <laughs> another question that has, that's come in from the from this present group is, and it's one that's often asked, is how strictly are JIB supposed to be followed 
by the instructor and repeated back by the learner, verbatim or just the essence? You get this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, if it's if it's being done correctly, then yeah, the the breakdowns are used one hundred percent, and they're our our trainers stick to them fully. They are they're just using the the words and the language that's on their their breakdowns, um, and they're expected one hundred percent to follow their card and go through all all you know every bullet point on their card and follow all the iterations of it um if we're at a point where we can't do that then we we don't even start training because we're not prepared if we're not gonna if we're not set up to do it the right way then we don't do it at all and we we go back and figure out how we how we can get through that so and they are expected to follow it completely yeah, good. Um, I like it. You're saying that if you can't do it, you go back. So what I understand yeah. you to be saying there, that if you find you, it, it's hard to do, the, the problem is in the job instruction breakdown or something. It's more, you've got to go back and look at, look at what you're doing um, and improve it because the problem's there rather than the system, if you like, rather than the method. That's what you're saying. Yeah, we, 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 know the, we know the method works. So we know if we follow the method, it's going to work every time. So sure. we have to find a way to follow the method. So if if we're running into speed bumps or roadblocks of some kind, we have to find a way to get around them so that we can use the method because that's the one thing we cannot change because we know that's what works. Yeah, right. Pretty good reason for sticking with it. Right. Whereas when we were in uh, we were in Vancouver up in Washington recently at the Carter and JI thing with Church and Dwight, which you were part of. Yeah. Thanks to them, which was terrific. You, when we were at dinner one night, you illustrated the deployment of JI via a trainer's folder. Can you elaborate on that, please? Yeah, yeah. And uh, we have, you know, we have a couple little snippets here in a few minutes we can kind of show. So it'll be a little visual for everybody. Um, but we've essentially put together kind of a trainer's guide for all of our job instruction trainers. Um, and they use this to keep themselves organized. So, um, it's essentially a checklist of all of the things they need to do during a, a during a training package. So, uh, for example, if they were, we were training somebody on a, a filler of some kind, they have a checklist of everything they need to do. They have a checklist for themselves about what they need to go over in their prepare the worker step with the learner, um, going through making sure every single every single learner gets the same standardized prepare the worker step. Then. A, they have a full binder of all of the listed job instruction breakdowns that go over each task associated with that piece of equipment or, or that job. Um, we've created kind of a, a tracking sheet which marks which days and times and line uh, all of those job instruction breakdowns were used and which, which tasks were trained at what times. And you guys will be able to see that here in just a few minutes, what that looks like. Um, but it's really just a way to make sure that all of our all of our trainers are going through the exact same process in the exact same order, using the exact same breakdowns, preparing the work of the exact same, um, and then similarly doing the same follow up step with each of them. So we know we're providing a really really standardized package. Yeah, a lot. Did you want me to bring up the PowerPoint, Wes, for you to no. go for it? Yeah, yeah, whenever you want. It's it's. I think it's one of the some of the last slides that are on there. So whenever, whenever works for you, Oscar, up to you. Right. So tell me which slide to stop at. Number seven. You can start at seven. seven. Well, actually you can start at eight, I think. I think seven. Oh, oh, that'll work there. Either, either one. So, okay. yeah. So we've made just a very small change to the, the job instruction breakdown template. Um, very small as and we've basically added a prepare the worker step um, up towards the top so we have these filled out with notes for each of our trainers um, again so they can they can provide a standardized prepare the worker phase so again making sure every every single learner hears all the things they need to before we actually get into the important steps of of how to do that task so, um, and so, we, so written in that prepare the work, is that what's written on the pocket card or have you put your own uh, uh, words in there? Is that what you're saying? No, yeah, it's actually, it's actually, you know, things to remember about doing the job. So they're still following their card. They have that. Yeah, right. So they're doing all of those items. Yes. But when they're going through that prepare the worker step, um, these are all things they need to remember to go over. Most of them, 
most of them relate to the state the job bullet point. Right, so they're could, specific to that, whatever is being yeah, taught. Usually, yeah. So it could be, you know, pointing out um, any safety watchouts or pointing out a lockout yeah. tagout point um, or, you know, pointing out a certain conveyor that will be important later on to know about. Things like that, really prepping them for the important steps that are to come and the key points that they'll hear about shortly. Yeah, right. Okay. So um, just helps keep the, the trainer organized. We found that's been really helpful for our, uh, our JI trainers. Makes and then sense. we are tracking version numbers as well as we make updates to these breakdowns or find improvements or standards change, anything like that. And we have to update our breakdown sheets. We, you know, we're tracking those version numbers so we know which. Um, which one's being used um, and ensure we're using the current um, and most, you know, um, yeah, I mean, using the most current version. So sure. go to the next one if you can, Oscar. <laughs> so this is the um, kind of tracking sheet I was mentioning a moment ago. So we've put this together and this is in each of the, the trainers guides. They each get a binder before they start a training package. Um, this one is for one of our packers on our can line. Um, essentially notes, obviously, who the who the learner is, who is our trainee, when they started in the training package. We've got um, a box up towards the top there where we we track when the person has completed an e-learning module that goes along with that equipment center. So we've we've built e-learnings where people go through and do an interactive, um, you know, kind of informational training, maybe forty five minutes or so, um, about on the specific on the packer. In this case. Yeah, for that that piece of equipment. Yeah, so it'll go over safety, quality, and parts and components. Right. In that so it's, knowledge, it's, the, it's the background knowledge they'll need yep. to be able to um, do the, exactly to practice exactly. the skills. Yeah, right. Yep, yep. So they'll go through that, and we'll track when that's completed, and then uh, we'll pair them with our JI trainers, and the JI trainers will take them out on the floor and um, start going through all of the tasks associated with that job. In this case, it would be the packer. Um, kind of the main box there in the kind of the body of the document we have listed all of the job instruction breakdowns that we will use to go along with that you know in order to teach somebody to do that job so those are i think it, i think there's 15 or 16 yeah. tasks listed there yeah. um and each one of those tasks has a job instruction breakdown associated with it so we'll train everybody on those tasks and then we'll track when that happened where that happened and who the trainer was and any comments that go along with that. So this is what the, our AI trainer fills out. Um, this particular this particular job, this would probably take about a week or so to get through all of those, get right. through all of those tasks. Um, and you know they're doing they're doing the prepare the worker and their follow up steps to each of those tasks as they go through the entire process. So this is just our tracking sheet to um, to keep all of that organized. And then this then gets recorded and and saved in our um, in our digital files towards the end. Sure. Uh, we've also just got some language down at the bottom as people sign off on this at the end of the training package. Um, and we stole a little bit of this from uh, from our church and Dwight friends. They had something similar, and we really liked it. So we borrowed some of this uh, some of this from them and introduced it to our documents. Um, but basically, the instructor is signing off and saying the person uh, they are confident the person can do the job. Right. Some of our caution points in JI. Um, or, you know, continue and follow up until you know they know. So this is their sign off saying that. And then the, the learner also is signing off that the, train, the trainer had them do the job each task four times and that their trainer had their blue card present throughout all of the training sessions. So yeah. we're getting kind of double sign off that and ensuring that the, the full process was followed. Um, and if at any point those, you know, we're, we're finding people can't sign off on that, then we have to go back and look because we're not following the method properly. So, so. it's a two-way street. There's a bit of a... Yeah, absolutely. I, hadn't, I haven't ever noticed that before, heard of that. So you're also getting verification from the learner that the trainer trained them as per the method. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a two-way you know, street. For us, yeah, it's a, everything is about the learner. So we want to make sure we're, we're listening to them too. And they're saying, if they're saying anything other than, yeah, I did the job at least four times, and my trainer had their card. If they're not saying that, then we're not doing our job as the training department because we're not following the method. We're not we're not giving the learner what they need. So, so it's, it's about them. The, we have to make sure they sign off on that. Exactly. The learners are the customer. Right. right. Yeah. 
and also no. important to note in this as well from a, a handoff perspective this is one of the steps you we're going to go on to some other things here in the next slide this is how we know we're, we're keeping to the method and i get asked that a lot is like how do you know that your ji trainers are training the ji way they're supposed to be this is one way another yeah. way is we actually spend time with them so we know yeah. uh, but it's a validation point we do we are a unique facility in that sometimes for people pretend they never were trained and this kind of helps us with that um, but if you want to go to the next part so this is part just a three. quick question on, yeah. on the on the working through the 15 on the pace of that is that on a training timetable that states the pace or is it up to the instructor to determine the pace of learning, the, the ability of the learner to learn and therefore govern the pace? Sure. Yeah, at this point in the, the package, it's more it's more up to the, the trainer, yeah, the instructor to determine That's how right. fast these things are going. Um, sure. It also could it, it also could vary based on <clears throat> on actual production what's what's happening on the floor oh, yeah, um, yeah. is it running are are we able to do some of these things even um you know have we been able to do a changeover if if we haven't then you know we can't we can't cross that one off yet so um yeah it's more of a it's more of a fluid piece at this point yeah very good celeste did you say go to the next slide Yes. So that's our sign off sheet. The next piece is a, an important note that you put together for the instruction. Yeah. So this is also part of the binders um, as well that that uh, you saw a few weeks ago, Oscar. And these are essentially some more detailed prepare the worker notes that are throughout the, the trainer's guide. Sure. So um, essentially the 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 document on the left there. You can see it's it's titled checklist for job instruction breakdowns number one through five. So a trainer would go over all these things uh, briefly before they go out and train tasks one through five that were on that previous list we were just looking at. So this is all the this is all the important things they need to know about that. Um, after they complete breakdown five and they train that task and the person is doing well on one through five and we're ready to train them on task number six. This next this next document on the right is a little bit of a smaller list. That would be the next document in the trainer's guide. So this would tell the the JI trainer they need to go through this small checklist here with the learner before they're able to go and train tasks number six through twelve. So they go through this list as a kind of a secondary prepare the worker step, kind of in the middle of that the full training package. So. Um, and then there's one more, I believe, before they get into the more uh, complicated uh, tasks of like changeover and adjustment, those type of things. So we have these throughout of our throughout all of our training packages for our uh, our trainers to be sure they stay organized. Again, and they're all providing, you know, really really standardized information that's going out to all of the learners. Yeah, so, no, I really like the way you support the trainer through this. Makes a lot so of would sense. you say, Wes, we get asked a lot, like, is, how many jibs do you have or job instruction breakdowns? How, is everything a job instruction breakdown? What this is doing is really these are the tasks that we would have them do job shadowing with or be with an operator, op another operator and just kind of learn through osmosis or through the making stuff up version of training. Yeah. And we've standardized it. And this is not a job instruction breakdown, but it's necessary. So it's part of the prepare work. Right. But yeah, essentially, this is a really detailed um again state the job point which is in the prepare the worker step mm -hmm. in the four-step method so i mean if you if it's big enough on your screens to read um, a lot of it's really general stuff like a quick tour of the line um, a quick talk about line flow where to throw away your cardboard where to throw away glass the difference between the, the different trash bins um which safety vest is okay where there's forklift traffic how to use a knife properly so there's some you know some really simple stuff in there now all those things yeah, are going to come knowledge into play. stuff it's all knowledge stuff right yeah. all those things are going to come into play once we start going through the tasks and just start teaching you how to actually do the job all those things will be will be factors that you'll need to know so we want to cover yeah. off on all that stuff before we get into actually the important steps and the key points of how to how to complete the job yeah i really like what you've done there because i think what often happens in ji we get part way through the task instructing the task realize that there's a knowledge component and then we yep. get then we get distracted by that which yep. breaks the pattern of delivery of the um instruction yep and we and we did that we we battled with that for a while 
where we yeah, it's you know, we'd, we'd start getting into tasks and realize we haven't really explained what this is yet we're expecting somebody to um, you know work with it so um, yeah. so yeah so that's that was the you know that was the result of, of working through that issue for however many months we struggled with that bill van dyke has asked are your trainers dedicated trainers or do they have a production line job too yeah they work for ops so they're they're production employees and then as we need them for training we will schedule them um to be you know working essentially for us for the day yeah. or however many days we'll we'll need them mm -hmm. to depend but when we don't need them for as as trainers they will go back to production and they'll run run the lines or you know do whatever they they do when their staff's there so they're primarily trainers um first and foremost but then when they're not occupied in that sense in that area they're operators well it right. depends on who's paying sometimes the ops managers will say to us well they're operators first and trainers second and we say yeah, no they're yeah. trainers first and they're ops second but we, we have joint custody is yeah, I understand. The, the, and the reality of operations, I imagine, is when the, you know, a couple of people call in sick, well, then the line has to run. We have those days, and that's <laughs> when we sit there and go, we're going to have to rush through this job instruction breakdown. We're not doing it. Yeah, right. Fair call. That's when that regrouping happens, yeah. and that's when sometimes it gets escalated from him to me to go and negotiate. And yeah, it's no fun. Worries. All right, we better get on to the JI slash standardized work part of yeah, you better. Uh, this. <clears throat> so just here for everyone, here's two or three slides that just with some definitions, and I'm going to ask Celeste and Wes to comment. So the work, the question came up in the last webinar was the difference between job instruction and standard work or standardized work. So here's some key definitions which are critical in answering that question. The first is... Standardized work is an end condition. It is the end condition that exists in the workplace after after work standards and standard work have been identified and taught and both are being followed explicitly. So that's what standardized work is. It's an end condition. That begs the question as to what is work standards and standard work. Now, I could, we could spend all day on this, but here's a quick uh, uh, definition of work standards. They are concrete statements about various work conditions, work methods, work management methods, and other precautions. So they may be a specification. They may be set points on the machine. They may be a, um, a uh, an SOP on its, in its own right would fit into there. Then standard work is a term that refers to a specific task or job for which the content, sequence, timing, and outcome have been identified. These are three definitions that have come from Kato, who is uh, Ono's HR advisor uh, in Japan, uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s, as straight from the horse's mouth. So standard work is a description of that motion and is an interaction with machines and materials. So there's an example of st a standard worksheet. Uh, very, very quickly, lemonade sales, and it states the um, the specific task or job, states the job content, surface prep, juice and, juicing and mixing, uh, and it shows the sequence, uh, therefore it shows the flow of human motion, and it's got timing in there, tack time and cycle time. So from Cato's point of view, that was what a standard work looks like. Now, where does JI fit in? Now, remember that standardized work is an end condition. It is the end condition that exists in the workplace after work standards and standard work have been identified and taught. So that the, the and taught is way, where JI fits in. We have work standards. We have standard work. Now, job instruction is a way to get the person to apply the work standards safely, correctly, and conscientiously. Because Cato said that it's an end condition, these work standards and standard work have been identified and taught. So the, the, the obvious question is, how do we teach people? We teach people via job instruction. Yep. So Celeste and Wes, do you want to yep. comment on uh, that what I've, that overview I've given there, please? Yes, I wish, Oscar, I could have you on, on record. And thank you. I'm glad this is recorded because this is a conversation that happens in our world all the time, like every every day every other day. Well, you guys are doing this JI thing. Why don't we just use your, your jibs as our standard work? The answer is no. It's part of the standardized work package, the complete deal. And yeah, it is really a give and take said. relationship. It's a give and take relationship. We need this partnership with our operations folks. 
And in our culture here, it's it really is a hard shift. I mean, we put our training organization used to write standard work at times. And when we came on board and we said, we're going to do JI, we're going to put this in hard park and say, we are no longer going to tell operations how to do their job. Operations, please tell us what materials, what machines, what people, how, when, timing, all the nine, and we will learn how, we will teach you how to do those things. We need that partnership. And it's been really that constant reminder, lots of knockout, drag out conversations, a lot of not fun stuff, but it really productive in the sense of like, we are truly a partnership, training and ops. We are working on our standard, which is JI. And that's how we make sure things get done. Is there a relationship? Yes, 100%. And we can't have one without the other. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my coaching now is helping ops managers determine how to make time to write their own standards so we can use the standards to do to train. Yeah, perfectly said. And that's most, a lot of companies we work with get in trouble because they grab onto JI and they start to make JOBs their standard work. So the JOBs end up with a million miles long and unusable in both instances. <laughs> so I love the way you've described that. It's exactly how it should be. It's a longer haul, but it's exactly how it should be. I do have a kind of a graphic to that if you want. I think it's slide seven. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, let me just. It's an eye chart, there. friends. It's, it's. Well, it's going to take a minute, but I can yeah, no, that's good. certainly good. walk you through it. Um, it's not the it's next one after seven. this, the one after. Yeah, next one. Nope, next one. There we are. Oh, we're having fun with PowerPoint. One before that. There we are. Okay. So at the top part of this screen, really where we start with is on the previous slide, I was going through the different layers of learning and all that fun philosophy stuff. So we have information. Information is needed, and this is coming from operations, and as your standard operating procedure, standard work, there's some tools listed there. Those are then used by the training organization, and there's really four different buckets of work. There's the, we determine the method of how we're going to train. The delivery method uh, is next, evaluation of skill, and recording of it. So we walk through that. You see on hands-on modality, we have job instruction. It's one of many ways in which we train. But we can't do this in existing processes and equipment without having a standard. So that's really, really hard. Then we move into with the training, which is very group focused and task focused into building learning development plans. And that some of those tools that you'll see are skills matrices and training plan tracking and career pathing. All encompassing this whole process is organizational culture. So if things change in the safety side, the quality food safety, because we make product that is consumed process improvements, systems improvements, something's got to change way back at the beginning. And if we have a culture that embraces continuous improvement, all of these things are moving towards improvement. So that's in stasis, in current state. Below is another version. We, if you've heard it talk about vertical startup before, that's the roadmap for that process below. And it's, you can see it's distinctly different, has the same ele elements to it, and it feeds into standardization through existing processes. So that's what that visual is that help explain the relationship. Good. We're getting very low on time. Um, Jamie Hoffman has asked, which department runs this program? Is it a unit of HR or its own department? We are, we jokingly call ourselves uh, the fake HR because we are, we are aligned with HR, but we're the fun HR. And um we are the training organization. It would not, hadn't always been that way. The training organization had reported directly in through operations leadership. And what our organization found is that we needed checks and balances in our training because the first thing to be sac sacrificed if production was going to be in trouble was training. And then it's kind of like not eating your vegetables and wondering why you're anemic later. So mm -hmm. this process now, we now report through HR where it's own with under the corporate training umbrella and we have a dotted line to operations leadership. Sure. Look, brilliant. You, it's happened again. Um, there's 13 questions that come up and that we've answered three of them. And I've got a list here on my left, but we're up to five. We're up to 5.30 my time, which will be half past the hour sometime in the USA. So we need to draw to a close. You probably know that um, I may ask you again, because it's just a, you guys are doing such a brilliant job with exploring the um, intricacies 
of applying job instruction and standardized work. Terrific job and a great example to a lot of people that are out there. So I may ask you to have another crack at this sometime next year, um, if that's all right. But look, um, Celeste and Wes, really, really appreciate the time you've given us here and the effort you put in and the, your thoughts. I know that uh, people value them very highly as we do at the Institute. So very much appreciate your time. Thank you, Skylar, uh, back to you. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Celeste and Wes, so much. Um, just a reminder that you will receive a link to view the recording within 24 to 48 hours. If you do have any questions regarding the recording, you can reach out directly to me. And thank you all so much again for participating. We'll see y'all soon.